today uh, we had the president address the states and he actually spoke about the fact that COVID-19 is finally over and I have IMF money. I don't know why I'm struggling to mention IMF today. <laughs> IMF money is here and is here to help us get back on our feet. Uh, we have two men who are here, one from the wing of the NDC and one from the NPP wing. I'm talking about Manasseh Atabuahin, who is from the NPP, and Adelma, who is from the NDC. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning, How morning, are you? Morning. Very well, my God. Great. great. And now we know that the state has been addressed. Should I start with you, Manasseh? Sure, Manasseh. Okay. So, your take on the state of the nation's address. Rosalind, a very good morning to you. And let me say a very good morning to our cherished viewers and to my brother Adele. And um, I have two sisters who are watching. <coughs> okay. They are lovely twins. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Anna Esedu, senior and junior. So, today is their birthday. So, I wish them well. Great. Um, it was very important yesterday for the president to address the nation. And as he said, the address was centered on two issues. One, on the COVID updates, and two, on the IMF program. Mm -hmm. And if you would recall, I think it was on the 5th of May that the World Health Organization did an announcement to buttress the point that COVID-19 is no longer a global worry because it's, it's almost gone. And so it was important for the president to also study the situation in Ghana and also to further update the nation on it. And so it was, it, was, it was a good show for the president to come back to our homes once again and also to update us on the IMF program and also to let us know that all the restrictions are over. But it's, it's important for us to keep up with the personal hygiene practices we were forced to practice during the COVID time. And so for us, we think it was good for the president to come to our homes. We know people will downplay the essence of mm. it. I mean, but for the ordinary Ghanaian, it was important for us to know that indeed the COVID is over. It's been over for quite some time yes. now, but it was important for the president to make an official announcement and also to let us know that even though the COVID is gone, the economic implications still linger. And so it's important for us to put in more effort to ensure we are able to build economic resilience so that in the advent of any other shock we'll be able to withstand it then it's also important for us to know as the government is doing that the the covid exposed us to our health inefficiencies and the government is doing more to ensure we are able to build more health infrastructure and so um, the national vaccine institute is being uh, updated and we are working on it it's been commissioned and we hope to expedite the work on it so that we'll be able to produce more vaccines to deal with measles and other co health complications. And so it was important for the president against all odds, against our political differences, against whatever people would say. We believe it was important for the president to come back to our homes to update us on the COVID and on the IMF program for us to know how we are sustaining mm. the economy back again. But, you know, like you said, you said that COVID was announced yeah. as it's uh, finally over. Yeah. Somewhere, you know, the early part in May. So why yeah. did he wait all this while? Was he waiting for the IMF money before he decided to address the nation? Not at all. Health implications has nothing to do with IMF money. I mean, it was important for the COVID-19 tax force to also study the terrain in Ghana uh, to know how COVID is going. And we know how well we've managed the COVID situation, even in 2020 and in 2021. And so there was no rush for the president on the backdrop of what the World Health Organization has said to just rush to make some but announcements. The World Health <coughs> Organization has said it. There's nothing like rush. They researched before they spoke. So what is rush about it? Of course, but they will make general statements to what is happening worldwide. And as a president, you owe allegiance to your nation to make sure you are able to do your own research to come out with factual information concerning the COVID. And we know that if, um, the last death that occurred was in January 2023. But when you look at the uh, severe cases, we have none. And so it was important for the president to take his time to address the nation at an appropriate time, no other than yesterday. And so we believe there was no point or there was no problem with the time, the, with the timing of his delivery. Okay. Yeah. Adele? <coughs> good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning to Manasseh. Um, <clears throat> let me start by saying a warm good morning to His Excellency, the former President, John Romani Mahama. Uh, a warm good morning to the National Chief Imam and my dad, the National Imam of the Sunni Muslim, Sheikh Umar Ibrahim. Oh, your, your dad is a National Imam? Of the Sunni Muslims, Sheikh Umar Ibrahim. Wow. 
Wilson, come on. I see. It's <laughs> a big man. Oh, yeah. Please tell you that I'll be sitting very soon because I want yes, to bless it from him. Of course. I know, right? Yes. Me there One prayer. Yes. <laughs> man, that's a YouTube. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll be coming. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I'll tell him. Sure, I'll tell him. Sure, sure. Wilson, it's difficult to basically discuss anything in this country today without having to go back and say a good thank you to the former president. And I'll tell you this because if you look at the kind of work the NDC had to invest in the health sector, so much such that when COVID came, it became a bit easy for people to actually have, you know, places for quarantine, places to be kept, you know, the, the Ridge Hospital, the UGMC Hospital, the Ghana Maritime Hospital, the Tamale Hospital expansion, the Regional Hospital expansion. You know, it, it was it was the cheap compounds. It was just, it was, the, the projects were just everywhere. And I remember at a point but in time... it wasn't all completed, right? No, it, all of, not all of them were completed. Okay. But I can mention, even if I wanted to mention those that were completed, I'll give you an example. So, for example, like the, the Legon Hospital, the Legon, the UGMC Hospital, mm -hmm. at a point in time was completed and they had to open it. Then now there was an the issue of there are no generators and there were no that and this. And eventually, Joy had to go there. There were generators, you know. So if you look at what that man has done, even in opposition, the fact that he's still touching lives. I mean, it's worth, you know, appreciating. And so this morning, I just want to say, you know, thank you to him, you know, for all, all the sacrifices and all the pain that we had to go through for all these things to be there. This is what you do to curtail problems in the future. When you put in the infrastructure, when things come, it hits you, but then you get a little leverage to be able to move. Now, <clears throat> in the entirety of what the president said yesterday, there was something that got me a bit worried, which is the fact that the president indicated that COVID funds were not misused or COVID funds were not, you know, there was no fraud, there was no, there was no corruption in COVID funds that were actually made available to the country. That is a palpable lie. Why do you say so? Because there's a report. But he debunked the report. Oh, why? Yes, he said that, you know, the report that came was, you know, they had to go through it and <coughs> realize that it wasn't so because he said that what they said about Oponkoma, that's Honorable Oponkoma, was not true. He said it. You know, I, I, I always get, do you know how many other things the president has said is not true? Do you remember the issue of this Galamse thing when, uh, you know, one of, one of the, the, the presidential staffers was, what was the, what's the name of the guy, the one who was cleared eventually by the president and then the ministry, the, the, the Ghana police service, that it wasn't true? How many other things? Afoli, Premix 4, it wasn't true. Everything is not true. When it comes to Nanado, everything is not true. What Everybody it's else. Really not true. What if it's what? It's really not true. A state institution investigates the matter, brings there's an audit report, brings it out, indicates that this is how much problem we have created, even if we haven't seen anything at all. We didn't see the issue of the health minister. We didn't see when the health minister was probed. We didn't see it. Even if we hadn't seen anything. We didn't see that of the health minister. Listen, I think it's gotten to that time when they need to start, you know, giving us some respect, you know, and treating us like, you know, we, we kind of also went, you know, had some education and we can read between the lines and put one to two and two to three. You don't do things like this. Yes, we have gone out of COVID. Yes, we're at a good place today. Yes, the economy is in a mess. And then they but keep attributing, they keep attributing all this mess to COVID. The IMF indicated to us in 2019, the country report, that this country was already at the verge of collapse before 2020. And I'll open the report and read to you. Before 2020, before COVID. <laughs> Yet they keep going back to COVID. But do we but also agree, COVID, Adele, that yes. Even IMF also came out to say that the country had gotten to this state due to COVID and due to the Russia-Ukraine war. So here's the thing. Say you have some amount of money. We save. We have reasons why we save. We have reasons why when we're spending, we do prudent expenditures. You have some amount of money. That amount of money is supposed to hold you, keep you safe, protect you, make you comfortable in times of shock. 
you decide to waste a lot of resources. As far as close, as far back as 2019, the amount of money you have borrowed in the state and where you were headed to, you had virtually no space for any other thing if you had anything hit you. So what we're saying is that as much as Yes, COVID hit us. As much as Russia and Ukraine hit us, what we're saying is that if we had managed the state well with all the investments the NDC had done, I keep telling you, look, we were drilling from one oil field. We gave them two more. Two more. We gave them what you call Dumso. We had to virtually even you know resolve it. We got them, we gave them what you call the Atuabo processing plant. We spent one billion on that plant. One billion to give you that tuabo processing plant, you know, and then themselves so we can have some gas. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we had done all these investments. But we have given you... Up on <clears throat> it, haven't they? What? What exactly? They should tell us. What exactly? You're going to IMF for three billion. We pumped one billion in one project. One. One. So you see, what they inherited from us, if they had held it well, if what we had left for them, it was left for us. We won't be here. But do you also agree that the NDC went to IMF? So it's not like it's a, it's a new thing where we are seeing the MPP go to IMF. And so it's a crime or it's a sin or it's forbidden. It's good you've brought this issue of the IMF. Let me take you back a little bit. So you see, these are half-brothers. I always make remarks about the fact that the NDC went to IMF and the NDC was corrupt and the NDC spent a lot of money and the NDC did a lot of waste. We were in this country at the point in time when we had issues with generational capacity. We couldn't produce electricity because the NDC came to power in 2012 and then we decided to do some massive expansion of industries, massive infrastructure, massive projects. Each one of these projects will require electricity. At the point in time, we were hit by it. We don't have enough generational capacity. Do you know what happened? Companies could not produce. Companies could not bring in the raw materials they actually required to be able to do the kind of production they had to do. So what happens? At the port, you don't get taxes. When production is not going on, what happens? People are laid off. The country was virtually so. So what you're earning, what you're getting in terms of revenue dropped. This is what happened to us. <clears throat> then we didn't have the money. We said, no, we needed to solve this problem. We needed to do something different, something unique. The former president, His Excellency John Romani Mahama, and I still feel till today, I still remember. I remember in 2014, thereabout, I saw him on the news, and you could virtually see that he's grown gray hair overnight. Worried, stressed. So we said, we'll do something. We said, let's do Ameri. So we brought the car power, we brought Ameri, we brought the IPPs. Listen to this. We brought the IPPs. Then they said, oh, even Ameri, we bloated them. We stole $160 million. John Mahama stole. We said, listen, this is not how it works. I want you to understand how vindictive they are. I'll, I'll just line in the next two, three minutes. I don't understand no. how vindictive they are. Don't like, worry. By the time, by the time. Manessa is definitely going to have to by the stay. No problem. You know, it's fine. Because, yeah. No, it's fine. Even when we all admit it. Because the president said yesterday that in, 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 you take drastic measures in, in, you know, in serious times. So even when we all admitted that the country was in a mess, companies were collapsing, barbers couldn't work. Do you know how bad it was? Hairdressers couldn't even fix hairs. People had to now resort to generator. People had to now buy electricity. They had to buy fuel. Because the country was three good years. Not one. I always dared them. I told them, why don't you just turn off Ameri, turn off car power, turn off the IPPs, and see what will happen to us? We bought all this. All the noise, he's a thief, he's a criminal, he's still 160. We still kept quiet. The man was focused, going, going, going. We did not stop there. Then we said, look, after we had now brought in Ameri, we had set it up, it was running, it was okay. We said, let's do something different. We brought what you call the ESLA, Energy Sector Levy Act, something to just save a little, you know, in order for, to be able to do something different going forward. They still spoke about that one. They said, oh, it was unacceptable. Today they've used that one as a collateral. Put that one aside again. Then going forward, we give them that tuabo gas process plant, at least today, today, at least today, we can say and boast that even though we owe in excess of $1 billion within the energy sector for gas, we owe local companies. Okay, let me break. I'll, I'll land it. I'll land in energy fee. I'm coming. I'll land in energy fee. So, yes, we bought that. 
We did all of that. We set it up. Then they said that, okay, we as a party, as a political party, aside what the NDC had taken, aside what General Mani Mahama has taken, they came to power in 2017. They harassed us. Honorable Nyama Donko's house, they were there. They said they needed evidence. After all of that, your own Attorney General comes out and says that, look, the agreement was well signed. Ameri was well signed. No one has spent a dime. Yet, it is okay for the President to say today that it is okay to spend all the monies that he has spent. It is okay to take drastic measures just so we can save lives. But it is not okay. It was not okay in the past to spend just a little more to be able to solve the issues of car. As the NDC, you had the opportunity to tell Ghanaians that this is what you were doing to save lives, did you? Well, let me come to Manasse. Uh, Manasse? I mean, Rosalind, my brother at the beginning of his submissions said that today is very difficult for you to discuss something in the country without you going back to say thank you to the former president. Certainly. And that is a palpable lie. Mm. We cannot talk about social protection uh, policies, I mean, by going back to say thank you to the president. What did he leave Ghanaians with? He was the one who cancelled the teacher training allowance. He was the one who cancelled the nursing training allowance. And so when we talk about teachers and, and nurses, we, I'm not too sure we can go back and say thank you. We would only be causing them more pain. With and regards so to not allowances, true. right? When we even talk about Doom, so we cannot go back and thank the former president. And he made allusions to some lies that they solved Doom. So it is not true. They did not solve Doom. So, so what did they in do? fact, in 2017, mm -hmm. when we came into power, <coughs> March, April, there were little piglets of, 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 of power outages. And their own party executives came out and they were like, oh, Doom so is back. Doom so something you solved. How could it be back in 2017? And so when they make statements that, oh, if you solve them, so my brother, you wouldn't have lost the 2020, 2016 elections. And so they are all lies. What they did was even so to cause the nation end? excess power. When did Doom saw excess? What year? Doom saw in 2017, 18, 19. That was when we brought finality to so, it. Probably so, so, in, even in 2018. So it ended in 2018. We are not saying they did not invest. Okay. All right. So they brought in power, which was good. Mm. And when you understand energy issues, excess power is, is okay. But when the excess is more excess, it becomes a problem. And that was the problem of the country. The kind of take or pay contracts they negotiated today till today, it took the MPP, the current MPP administration, to come and renegotiate some of the terms with these independent power uh, producing uh, uh, companies. And what we have done is to cancel some of the contracts. <coughs> when you look at the contract details of what they did, some of them are too expensive to the extent that if you want to cancel it, the judgment debt alone that you would pay, it would have been better if you leave it like that. But the question so is, when the, did it so end? Did it end in 2017 or 2018? It ended between 2017 and 2018. The point I want to establish okay, clearly, point, yeah? without any equivocation, is that mm -hmm. the NDC did not solve them so. Okay. They brought in power, which was good. But the excess <laughs> of it cost the country $1 million today to today. We pay $1 billion US dollars every year because of the excess power they brought in. And so when Adele sits here and you know, we have to, we cannot thank the former president when we talk about Doomso because the kind of businesses that collapsed under his tenure is so terrible and we don't want to go back to those conversations. Sometimes we I, cannot I, thank I, the I former just, president again. Sometimes it, I just want to know, sorry, yeah. I'm not cutting you, but please pardon me. Yeah. When did Doomso even start in the first place? Because um my little mind or my little memory is yeah. telling me that when you know back in the day as of 2006 as of 2005 <coughs> as of 2004 thereabout yeah. there was Doomso, right and it was at its peak where we even remember there was water challenges as well where we named the yellow gallons for four gallons yeah so when did Doomso start? When did people start losing their jobs, losing their businesses? And I, I like that you have made me aware that, you know, the NPP was able to end it in 2017, 2018. 18, yeah. But when did it start? I mean, Doomso indeed has been a generational problem. I'm not too sure. I cannot give dates, but I believe it even in the late 90s. But the, peak, the, the peak was around 2004. 2005 thereabouts i'm not right. too sure when the peak was but what okay. i remember currently is that in 20 between 2014 2015 2016 it was terrible mm, okay. it was it was extremely terrible i remember those times i was at the university of ghana <laughs> every time mm. there's doom so every people couldn't sleep you have to i mean it was it was so terrible and the way it brought economic activities to its halt was what was even more devastating 
businesses could like he himself said it the barbers couldn't work hairdressers couldn't work basic basic services we couldn't get i'm not sure during those times we would have been able to have our program the light would just go off abruptly like that and so what we know as government is that yes it has been a generational problem but the ndc did the country no good with the kind of contracts they signed mm -hmm. it is good to bring in a little mm -hmm. excess but when you bring in so much excess to the extent that we have a lot of the power we are not using then it, and, and and it's also difficult for you to sell because for example if you are selling if the general price of the new trinax right here is let's say 10 cities everybody gets it at the market for 10 cities then you bring some and you want to sell yours for 20 cities to the next country who buy it no one would buy that was the problem so they were excess but the moment you want to sell the excess even to the neighboring countries they will not buy because the price you'll be quoting for it were so unimaginable but what about it's the point that he made with regards to the hospitals because we are addressing the COVID 19 <laughs> you know issue where president has said that finally yeah. it's over and this, this is the best news ever i must yeah, say sure the best news because <laughs> Some of us were always asking, when will COVID-19 finally be over? And we have heard that it's over. Yes. And he addressed that, you know, the fact that there were hospitals that were put in place by his government <coughs> at that time is a reason why COVID-19 was able to be controlled. What about that? I mean, um, we, we cannot deny the fact that when the NDC were in government, they made some investment in the health sector. We can't deny that. But again, our inefficiencies when it comes to our healthcare were exposed because we didn't have a lot of hospitals you would go through most of the districts and no hospitals no chip compounds nothing mm -hmm. all right and so we know that as government it's it's this is the time we should invest more that's how come we bet the agenda 111 so that deliberately and consciously we'll be able to ensure we build hospitals in every district in the country mm -hmm. so that in the event of any health pandemic we'll be able to have I mean, hospitals to deal with these matters. And so it is not true that because of the health infrastructure they added, we were able to contain the entirety of the COVID pandemic. It is not true. Yes, they made some investments. We can't deny that. But it helped a little. Yes, till we were unable to do much. Because when you go to most districts, it's very clear, you travel to some constituencies, some districts, you would have to travel far and wide before you'll be able to assess hospitals. And so he cannot make assertions that oh, it's because of, did you build hospitals in every district in this country? Did you build hospitals in every constituency in this country? No, you only upgraded. COVID was everywhere. COVID was everywhere. That's how come we have been sincere enough to admit that in the advent of COVID, we realized that there were a lot of inefficiencies in our health system. Mm -hmm. And that's how come we deliberately brought out the agenda 111 so that we'll be able to build hospitals in every district across the country. <laughs> We are working towards that as have well. Have we started? We have. We have started in most most regions. Some of them are even at, the, at various stages of completion. And oh, we've upgraded great. most hospitals. You go to the Eastern, Eastern region, Koforidua Hospital, Hospital at um, um, Emprieso, uh, Obo, and all those places. We've done a lot of improvement in those hospitals. And we are doing more so that uh, it, would, it would not be the case that when you are in any district, especially in the hinterlands, mm -hmm. you would have to travel. Sometimes in the process of you traveling, the person will even lose his life. Mm. And that's not something government is happy about. And so we are investing more deliberately in the health sector so that <coughs> wherever you are as a country, it wouldn't be that it is only when you are in Accra and Kumasi that you will have access to the Kolebos and the and Konfa and But you know, um, during 2020, when <coughs> COVID-19 was at its peak, the president did address the nation and did tell the nation that before the end of the year, we'll have 88 hospitals. What happened to that? Yeah, that is on course. That's what I'm saying. Most of these hospitals are at various stages of completion. Okay. And we have upgraded most of them too as well. Mm. You go to the Bekwai Hospital, the hospitals in the eastern regions and, and a lot more Koforidua Hospital itself. We've done a lot more and we are still building more. We want to expedite the work on these hospitals so that before 2024 December, we would have completed most of them to serve the basic health needs of the Ghanaian people as well. Manasse, um, so for the viewers out there, yep. I know what they'll say is that, you know, you've been able to mention Koforidia where you are having some rehabilitation going on and all of that. Yeah. If you can mention some of the new ones, the areas, uh, it will be very good. Yes, I'll mention. Okay. Yes. All right. So as you look for it, yep. let me come to you, uh, Adele. Adele keeps drinking water. <laughs> yeah, you get very prepared. I don't know why. <laughs>
<laughs> mm. Manasseh, I'm not sure if you can just take a look at this. Um, Rosalind, I'm not sure if you can see what is actually written here. Oh, Mahama my. deserves no credit for fixing Doomsaw. This is March 2nd, 2016. I'm going to read for you because this is from your own portals. Now, this says that it says the former governor of the Bank of Ghana, speaking on Joy FM, said he sees no reason. Listen, listen carefully, Manasseh, and pay attention. He sees no reason why President Mahama would want the whole world to praise him for solving a problem he created. I didn't say this. So you're trying to say that? I'm bringing you again. No, I'm not done. This government inherited an economy without doing so. It is their own financial mismanagement which caused it. So we see no reason why they deserve credit for fixing a problem they created. Dr. Baumia said, March 2nd, 2016. You see, these people, that is why I told you they're vindictive. Look, did you bring AmeriPlant? Did you bring the IPPs? Did you bring car power? But they solved it. I'm coming, I'm coming. How did they do that? So how does Baumia... Well, that's what they say, they say they yeah, solved it. Oh solved. yes, that's what they They always say stuff. Don't they? They always say stuff. But don't you agree that Doomsaw ended in 2017, 2018? It did? I'm asking. So why is Baumia speaking in March 2016? Why? Listen, you see, these people, they have a nice way, okay, of making you feel like you're not efficient. When in reality, everything they accuse you of is them. So I ask them, turn off car power, turn off the IPPs, turn off ACA, just turn it off, shut it down. See what happens. We started a situation. We had a problem. At the time, earlier on I was mentioning, at the time that we brought in the plants and they all set up and everything was okay, then we had another crisis. The West African <clears throat> pipeline got broken. Just listen to this. I want you to listen to this. It got broken. Oh, I didn't know that His Excellency, the President, the former President, John Dramani Mahama, I didn't know he was an Olympic swimmer. So he went into the sea, went to see the pipeline, the West African pipeline, and broke it. He broke it. Nobody said that. No, I'm just saying. No, they say we, no, we caused it. They say we caused it. So I'm just asking. So he went in there and then he broke it. That what? Was that, was that something we created? But they didn't say He that. admitted. Okay. He, he admitted again that, oh, he admits that Dumso is a generational problem. So you say it's a generational problem, but Amir says no, NDC created it. What is this? How can you, like, how can you be so, so vindictive? He says what? Well, hospitals? Hospitals? Mission one regional hospital in your name. One. It's been built. When it's yeah. commissioned, we mm. will hear. Fine. It's fine. So we're waiting, right? We're waiting. Until then, you have no audacity. You don't have, you're not supposed to even have, the te you know, the temerity with which they speak. We didn't do anything. We didn't invest but, in the health sector. But, but says, wait, wait, wait. Before you continue, yes, yes, yes. we also Come. saw that there was massive control with COVID-19 under the MPP government. There was now, massive what? Control. Because ah. if we compare the number of people who died in Ghana as compared to even the U.S., of course, we know that the control <clears throat> was really there. It was good. We're one of the well-managed, uh, you know, <clears throat> countries. Yes. And we ought to give credit to the government. Let me ask him something. Teaching hospitals. 617 bed University of Ghana teaching hospital. You built it? Second phase of the Tamale teaching hospital expansion project for 400 more beds to make it 800 beds. You built it? The regional hospital, 420 Ridge, Red, Ridge Hospital, the 420 bed. You built that one too. You did that. Nanado did that. Okay, so no problem. 386 bed Bogatanga Hospital, you did that one too. The 250 bed Ashanti region, the, the Ashanti Regional Hospital, which is the Siwa Kumeu one, uh, uh, what you Kumasi one. The Kumeu one, even the Kumeu one we started, they left it for how many years? Seven years until this by-election. They went and said they are working on it. Right? Okay, leave that one aside. The 66 hospitals, which had the 60 bed capacity, Tepa, Nsoko, Konongo, Salaga, Chifu, Praso, the 100 bed um, Medina Hospital, the 120 bed Bekwa Hospital, you built that? Why do you do this? Like, you sit down and you he think he about it. He didn't say they built it. No, but he, he's surprised. So, no, I'm coming. No, he's discounting. You're asking this as though he has said that they built I'm it. Surprised. No. 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 I'm surprised. No, he never said that. He never said that. He never said that. He never mentioned any of them. Sweetheart, listen, I'm making an argument. The man sits here, says, 
What are we talking about? We, do, we built hospitals in places people cannot even access. No, no, but what I are we talking about? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm saying that he said that. And then he discounted when I, I raised the issues of the fact that the former president needs to be given some congratulatory, you know, message to the fact that this is how much investment we have done. Have you listened to all these hospitals I mentioned? Have you seen the number of beds these hospitals have created? Do you have an idea of what would have happened if we didn't have space even during the time for quarantine? Don't discount it. Aside that, what would have happened, aside this, what would have happened if we did not solve the Dumsa problem? What would have happened? You would have had the hospitals, you would have had the hospitals, but then you would have not had electricity to actually power them up. But, so, but my we, argument, we also had an oh. opportunity for them to solve the problem. And the problem How is that? Is that but Adele, let, is let's that? look at the number of people that lost their lives as com in Ghana, as compared to, you know, even Nigeria, as compared to uh, South Africa, as compared to the USA, the UK. Mm. We know that it was very well managed. And so, yes, the hospitals are there. If they didn't manage the situation, would have had more lives gone. Let's look at America. Look at the number of hospitals in America. Mm. Yet, look, look at the number of lives that were lost. You know, you cannot, you not, you cannot even compare America to Ghana because population-wise, look one state in the U.S. I guess so, you, but so, we look at their so, health system and they are not, way advanced. So, 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 my argument, so, so my argument is this. My argument is this. Something has to be done for something to be solved. We had two, we had two major crises during our time. The first one was the issue of Dumso, and I've recounted to you what, because when we're talking COVID, they are raising the issues of COVID because they claim that that was one of the reasons why things got messy in the state. And I'm trying to let him understand that even during our time, we also had a situation and then we solved it, which is what, which is the Dumso. And after we had done the solving, we didn't stop there. We put in so much infrastructure in place, so much such that when you were hit with COVID, you still had some leverage, which came from us. And we're saying that, give us some credit. Acknowledge that. Don't sit here and say, what did Muhammad do? Okay, Don't so sit the here credit and say, you want. Certainly, he deserves it. You can't sit here and say, oh, nothing happened. What did they do? I have mentioned to you, look, I can continue to mention. You did not build them. Okay. Point well made. When I said, did you find the list? Yes, and so... You asked me to mention hospitals. hospitals A few that hospitals we have that are, so yes, you, have you, been built. Konongo Hospital. So, so the which, president which integrated 60-bed capacity projects with that. Then also, um, there has been rehabilitation of a lot of polyclinics in Kumase, about 12 of them. And this cost the nation about some 94 million US dollars. Okay. All right. And, and there's also 12. the Kranza hospitals as well. Um, then also, I so can also mention... So, is new or rehabilitated? <laughs> Been rehabilitated. Rehabilitated. Yes. So, so, we have more rehabilitated hospitals as compared to more new hospitals being built. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Right. Yeah. What, so, we, are we done with the new ones or we are building? We are building. I've but mentioned that we have the agenda. They have spread across the okay. country. The agenda, agenda 111 projects mm. in every district. And we know some districts already have hospitals. So, what government seeks to do is to upgrade the capacity of the hospital to ensure we're able to bring in some equipments or health equipments to ensure mm. we're able to take care of But you people. know, knowing the NPP government, you have yeah. very good communicators, which you are one of them. If you start a project, you definitely let us know that the project is here, this project is here, that project is here. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that we are not able to mention exactly where they are. That's what I'm saying. There are various stages of completion. I think the data because we can... You, we are, can you, you have your roads that you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Let's look at the Teshi, the, is it, uh, the, the one from uh, in front of La, La Badi Beach Hotel. Yes. You mention all the, the beach time. Road. The beach road. But it's yes. not completed. But yes. you still mention it. Yeah. You mentioned the one around um, uh, Adjua Surface Area. What's it called? Um, Kwabinya. Kwabinya. <coughs> you mention so all from the Hachu time. To so, uh, yes. You mention yes. all the time, but it's not completed. Yeah. So why can't we mention the hospitals, although it's not completed? Well, that's what I'm saying. They're at various stages of completion. Okay. You go everywhere in this country, in almost every district, you find one hospital being worked at. Okay. Yes. Seven years. Every hospital. Seven years. Every, every, every district, every you every find district. one. That's fine. That's good. <laughs> Let's start uh, our newspapers. Of course, I know they've spoken a lot, my gentlemen, so I have just a few <laughs> minutes to go. Uh, the Daily Guide newspaper appeals court halt lawyer's suspension. Mahama Nanakomia tussle over ex Gracia, uh, Jaku, hope for Ghanaians, and uh, he's picked up his uh, forms as well. Nana Ope's 84 million euros Elmina fishing harbor, which is really, really great news. 13 kg we intercepted at KIA, that's Kumasi International Airport.
Is it Kumasi International Airport? No, now you people yeah, yeah, have made it. Yeah, it's an international airport. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. It has been upgraded. So it's no more Kotoka International. So there's Kotoka Kumasi. and there's Kumasi. Kutoka so this KIA, is, is it Kotoka or is it Kumasi? Let me go to page six and find out. Yes, please. I don't know if it's Kotoka we are talking about or it's Kumasi we are talking about. Because right now, KIA is everywhere. Yes, yeah, it's true. All right, so how come I can't find it? It's supposed to be on page six. Okay, page six. Yep. All right, so Narcotics Control uh, Commission made a significant burst on May 23rd, 2023, seizing a total of 12.67 kg of cannabis, also known as we worth 127,000 US dollars at the KIA cargo terminal. I'm thinking it's Kotoka because so. they didn't state that it's Kotoka. Okay, <laughs> they've stated it here, Kotoka International Airport. But that's a huge sum of money. That could solve some of Ghana's problems. 127,000 went to IMF for only three billion dollars anyway let's continue some entertainment here once upon a family hits major amazon prime streams celine dion cancels world tour uh, this is due to some health reason gloria suffer cries over sabotage okay a uh, car power ship in ghana invests three million us dollars in operations gips demands national procurement strategy for imf cash and government to roll out five-year food security plan 410 young entrepreneurs benefit from giz support great 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 some sports here Bayern dip Dortmund to dramatic Bundesliga title dreams shatter aduana dreams and if Pin boy win Cape Coast GNPC Ghana's fastest race. Okay, hopefully we'll get another Usain Bolt coming from Ghana. Let's do the new Crusading Guide newspaper. Dr. Fria Koto picks nomination forms today. Okay, so currently we have how many people pick the forms? Manasseh, how many have picked so far? Um, I am aware of about five. I'm not too five. sure. Five. Okay, let me see. Here. I think I have I the so. numbers here. Um, so far, for those who have picked up forms, I think that we have. Okay, so we have uh, Alaji Baumia, our, yes. our vice president. We have Ejako, uh, Adai Nimo, Kwabne Japo, and uh, Boachi Ejako. They've all picked the forms. You know, Kennedy is yet to pick, and we know that Alan is also yet to pick up the forms. Okay. Yeah. So for the new Crusading Guide newspaper, IMF deal will restore confidence and bring Ghana back on track, says the president. Former NPP MP advises Baumias to stay away from flag bearer ship race. Wow. I don't know why he will do give that advice, but well. Why Dr. John Kuma Esquire is loved by people of a GISO constituency. Hmm. All right. How national uh, and regional House of Chiefs planned distorting Pram Pram chieftaincy history. Uh, Boss MD receives Exemplary Brand Leadership Award. And Dr. Tremating launches campaign to contest a Sikuma or dubbing Abra Kwa seat for NPP. Okay. Oh, now I understand because the NPP race is very, very close. So we see um, more of the hopefuls for the parliamentary seat, you know, taken to the newspapers to advertise themselves. Not a bad strategy. The Finder newspaper, going to IMF was a painful decision for me, says Ananadu, that's our president. Ghana Card rescues UCC lecturer to travel from Germany to Ghana. Uh, GRE slaps 12.5% upfront payment on recalcitrant importers. Okay, you ought to pay, else you pay this penalty. Kwame Pienim kicks against review of free SHS. And Elmina gets 85 million euros fishing habble. President Ekufado recalled how John Mahama said the project will never materialize. All right. We'll do the Ghanaian publisher newspaper. Like I said, 84 million US, uh, sorry, euros Elmina fishing habble commission. Brilliant Tokonu excels at verting a jacko best man to lead the mpp says the group and a free a dr free akoto picks forms today i had no intention to insult nogoku this coming from ajin asari <laughs> bishop ajin asari now this has been a big issue mm -hmm. uh for the past probably like four or five days mm -hmm. We'll talk about that during what's trending. Why Dr. John Kuma is loved by his constituents. And that'll be all for the Ghanaian publisher newspaper. Let me do the daily graphic newspaper, which will be our final newspaper. Like COVID, we will succeed President Raleigh's nation for economic revival. 
Uh, Non-VAT registered importers to pay 12.5% upfront power of content and necessary for justice delivery. CJ nominee says so. And virtual InfoSec builds BOG Cyber Security Center. Great, great, great. Quickly, let's talk about how the president has said that. The, okay, so he says, IMF deal will restore confidence and bring Ghana back on track. Manasse, your take on it. Yes, and before I go to the IMF, I just want to, I've, I've just gotten the data I was looking for. Good. So Fantastic. to mention some of the hospitals we have constructed, mm -hmm. newly built. Newly built. So we have 10, 10 polyclinics in the central region. So today as we speak, mm -hmm. when you go to Potsin, I don't know if I got the pronunciation right. What, what did you mean? Pot, Potsin. Potsin, okay. You, yes. They will understand. You, yes, you, um, this has been commissioned in August 2018. When you go to Bimpon Eja, mm -hmm. you see one there. When you go to Ekunfi, Naakwa, you see one there. When you go to the Rampon, <coughs> you see a newly built polyclinic over there. Mm -hmm. When you go to Mankron, you see one there. And Briwa and Besiansi, mm -hmm. you see one there. When you come to Accra, you would find five polyclinics. Um, when you go to Ashaman today, 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 you find one there. It was commissioned in 2019, and it is working. So Ashaman, you see one polyclinic over there. When you go to Botiano, you see one over there. And when you go to Adenta Obojo, Mm -hmm. You see one over there. And when you go to Sege and Odumantu, you see another polyclinic over there. And so, and there are a lot more of these hospitals under construction. And so, when it comes to hospitals, we have built from the scratch. At least in Central Region, we can mention ten, and in Greater Accra here, we can mention five. Um, talk of the IMF program. Mm -hmm. um, government has maintained that the essence of the IMF program was to complement the program government had drawn which is the post-COVID program for economic growth. We have maintained that it is not the IMF program that would turn around the fortunes of the country overnight. When you look at what the IMF program seeks to do, it seeks to deal with one aspect of our problems, which has to do with the balance of payment issues, demand supply of dollar imbalance, and, and the market failure of um, the dollar issues in the country. And so what government seeks to do is to strengthen the economy, to ensure we are able to uh, have good monetary policy rates to ensure we are able to have good policy to deal with the exchange rates to ensure we drive entrepreneurship and export-based uh, production here in Ghana. And these are the pillars of the post-COVID program for economic growth to also ensure we are able to drive down our debt portfolios. And so the IMF program is only to deal with one aspect of the program in the short to medium term to ensure we have more inflows of dollars in country so that when it comes to the price of the dollar and the demand and supply for dollar will be able to balance it. The good news <laughs> is that with the coming in of the IMF program, it has laid way for other investors or bilateral countries to also stand behind Ghana to support us. That's how come the United States of America has also announced a $300 million data center, uh, state of the art mm. data center for Ghana. And so Oh, with all this coming in, it will ensure we have a lot more dollars in the country to deal with our balance of payments. But this data center, we what? are supposed to take the money out of the IMF, aren't we? No, no, no. The data center is completely different. This is from it's, World Bank. It's, okay. it's from the World Bank, mm. not from the IMF program. But it's out yeah. of a result of the fact that we got the IMF deal. Exactly. Okay. exactly. And so even during the times when government was having negotiations with the IMF, we also had some sideline conversations with most of our bilateral countries. And what they were waiting for is just for us to conclude the deal with the IMF so that they could come back to help. And the United States of America has led the way. So is and this money free or we are going to pay back the 300 million US This is dollars. like a grant. It is a project specific, I mean, so it's contract. A grant, so we are that not paying. Yes, okay. but there will be strict monitoring concerning how the data center will be built and what it will be used for. And so this would help. Once we have this $300 million in country, what it would mean is that the Bank of Ghana will keep the $300 million and they will give the government of Ghana the CD equivalents so that all these projects will run. And now, once the sorry, BOG, please continue. Wait. Once the BOG has these dollars, it would mean that with all our importers, those who always cry because uh, there is high demand for dollars but the supply of dollars are in insufficient, they would have some dollars to uh, meet up with their trade demands. And so this will help stabilize the country in just the short to medium term. But what is important for the country in the long term is to ensure we are able to drive down our debts and also to ensure we have more industries functioning as we have deliberately implemented the uh, one district, one factory. 
And as we are also reviving most of our the factories. One district, one factory of is, is, is very much alive? It is very much alive. We have so a we lot have, of... How many, how many factories do we have so far? As I speak, about 126 factories are working. But let me be clear that with the one district factory, what government did was that one government had to reinvest in some of the factories that were already existent. Okay. Most of them almost shut down. And most of them also had issues when it comes to money and even equipment to keep them running. And so government invested in them. And also government has built newly, new, just fresh factories. And how many are there? A hundred? A lot. Those a ones lot. too are a lot, yes. And so the aim, until as a country we are able to produce most of the things we need, we would always <coughs> continue to have The challenge issues I with have with the payments. one district, one factory is that everybody yeah. you speak to say... They, they actually tell you that they haven't seen it. So how come they haven't when seen it? When you go it, to a Crocon today, 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 there's a shoe factory that has been built fresh. All right. When you go to most of the, when you go to, for example, when you go to um, the Ofasia Arabi area, you would also find um, a, so which a side rice milling. So which is the shoe factory? A Crocon itself. A itself. Crocon, okay. Yes. All right. So there are a lot of these factories, and there's a new rice ones that... Rice milling factory. Okay. Yes, in the Achimoda of Fasi Enclave. Okay. Yes. So when you in every 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 district has what is good in producing, they have comparative advantage so, so in far producing you've one thing. Two for me. Oh yes, there are a lot. I can okay. pull down the list and mention everything. Okay. So, so your people should send it to us so that we can mention them. Okay. 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 Uh, Adele. Who's me? <coughs> See. <laughs> yeah, some more. Um. The MPP, I just listened to Manasseh, and it's only, it's only fair that I call his attention to a few things. You talk about factories. From the beginning, we were told that one district, one factory. Do you know how many districts we have in the country, if you can help me? It's kind of escaped me a uh, little bit. Please, Adele. I'm just Rosalind. Uh, Adele. Rosalind, I'm trying to have a conversation. No, I'm trying no, to have a conversation. You are having a conversation with our viewers, I, not him. Rosalind, I'm having a conversation what? with Manasseh. No, I may be surprised. No, he's no, lost what he not, wants to say. So I will not let, let you do that to Manasseh. He, he's not let here me. to come and answer the number of constituencies okay. we have. Let me, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Let me tell him something. When we decided that we needed to change the fortunes of this country, we said, look, <clears throat> we needed to set up real factories. And I use the word real, R-E-E-L, real factories. A typical example is what I mentioned earlier, which is the Atuabo processing plant. That project alone was worth $1 billion alone. I'll bring you again. We decided to do what we call the Elmina processing, fish processing plant. We worked on what we call the Buipi Shiena factory. The Commander Sugar Factory. Now, let me bring you, this is one of the most exciting ones for me. Do you know why? Because this country, the amount of sugar, they're talking about dollars and they're struggling. We were giving them solutions, they're not listening. The amount of sugar. What solution were you I'm giving? I'm coming. The amount of sugar and rice we import into this country on a yearly basis is extremely ridiculous. If we can solve the problem. So what did Muhammad do? He says, look, let's look at the Commander Sugar Factory. Let's do something different. Then they said, who builds a factory? Listen, who builds a factory when there's no sugar cane? But then I also ask, I'm having a little bit of difficulty understanding their way of reasoning. Say I want to, I want to come up with a thousand fowls. I want to wear thousand fowls. I decide I don't want to buy maize from anywhere. I want to produce my own maize and feed my fowls. So I decided, okay, the right thing to do would be to look for a place, plant the maize. When I have the maize and I harvest it, for the fowls, it's not difficult. We can just go pick the fowls and come put them inside. So we decided to put up the factory. When the factory is ready, we can now work out and get sugar cane to feed the factory. Why, how, do you, how do you put up a factory without a sugar cane? Rosalie, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. How do you, how do you, again, uh -huh. how do you, Go bring raw materials. So you're planting sugar cane. Mm -hmm. How long does it take? Three months, right? Three months, sugar cane. So you're planting sugar cane, which has a short lifespan, like short lifespan, um, like lifespan in terms of production from the time you're done, as compared to putting up a factory. So do it hand in hand. Listen, 
So, so wait, first you run the factory. I am yet How to see... How do you run the factory no, without sugar? No, I'm coming, I'm coming. You tell when me I say, you have invested in a Rosalind, factory and you don't have the raw materials for Rosalind, the factory? Rosalind, Rosalind, when I say run the factory, I actually meant to say you build the factory. Do you know why it is not a difficulty? Because you can always get a land and, and what? And plant the sugar. But if the factory, if the factory is not in place, the machines are there, you've come, you've built, you have, uh, yeah, you have sugar cane, you've, you've planted sugar cane, it's ready. Where do you feed it? Where do you feed the sugar cane? Sugar Where cane do you... has a market. Start. It has it has a market. Listen, so start we're talking... your planting, Listen. and then you put up the factory, or put up the factory alongside planting. How do you... you put up a factory and say I've started working without sugar cane? What are you doing in there, Rosalind? I am telling you this on anywhere, any day, any place. When you need raw materials for a project, when you have raw materials to be used for a project and you have the main project which you're supposed to undertake. Who goes to buy leather for a shoe factory and come and store when the shoe factory is not in place? Who does that? How do I go, how do I go, Rosalind, how do I go bring 1,000 day old chicks? Listen, 1,000 day old chicks, come and put them down and then go planting maize to come and feed them. So both Who parties, does that? So both parties so I'm saying, do it right, So right? I'm saying, so no, okay, in any, it hand listen, hand. listen, listen, in any case, in any case, the Commander Sugar Factory has been in existence. How many years has it been now? The factory is there. How many years has it been? Seven years. Okay, so we gave you the factory. We gave you the Commander Sugar Factory. Where's the sugar cane you have planted? So, assuming, assuming, or granted, assuming the NDC made a mistake, assuming the NDC was not thinking straight, assuming the NDC didn't know how to manage it, no problem. We were supposed to do sugar cane before factory, no problem. We admit, we say, okay, no problem. Now, we build the factory. You have come into power. All you have to do is plant sugar cane and feed it seven years. Then you sit here and but say you're what? creating shoes. Creating what? Shoes. Okay. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, we have <laughs> on the on the Commander Sugar <laughs> Factory. Is it's funny? We we don't have short memory, as the former president has said concerning Ghanaians. Our memories are working pretty well. Mm -hmm. You remember in, in 2016 when the NDC supposedly called some chiefs, respectable chiefs in the country, they kept them in the sun to do some sort of so-called commissioning. After that, just in three days, the factory went back to default settings. The factory was off. It didn't work. In fact, when you look at the audit work that the government did, we brought in some people to take over to ensure they're able to audit and give us the value for it. The value they quoted were just outrageous. What do when we, we came in, when we came, we realized the factory was dead. No sugar cane planted, just an old building. We, in fact, the machines in there to refine <coughs> the sugar cane, just nothing. Empty like what that. What did you do about it? It took this government to invest, to build more. And in fact, remember last year or so, we did our first test run. After, and we even had six years? We did our first test run of it. They couldn't do one. Mm. We did that, and we had some of our sugar, even in the various markets selling. And so when it comes to so commander have you sugar, the sugar cane? we have on a very large scale. Okay, great. On a very large scale, so that to provide raw materials to do that. I mean, you can't, you can't say that mm. you will build without providing raw materials. Okay. I mean, I said, right, good, gentlemen, I, said, um, I must say time is up. And me, so me, you want to let me, let let me, you, you let me tell one last, you, one last bite. So your, your final words, you take your last bite. <laughs> okay, okay, sure. So okay. Uh, this has been new slash segment. My guests have been Adele from uh, the camp of the NDC. Adele Uma represents the NDC. And of course, I have with me Manasse. Uh, Manasse also represents the NPP. So your final words, gentlemen, before you go. I'll start with you, Adele. Okay. Listen, listen. <clears throat> my final words is basic. I'm saying that whether it is the horse that went to the river or it was the river that came to the horse, we gave you a factory. I remember. Speak up, boys. Your final <coughs> word, too. We gave you a factory. I remember when Captain, was it Captain Smart? I'm trying to remember. You know, Joy, was it, I'm not sure who is it, but one of the journalists actually indicated, yes, truly, they actually did go to this home in the sugar factory. Sugar was actually being produced. They had seen the sugar that was being produced. We were done. We built it. We actually test run it. You know, when you build it, you test run it, you find one or two issues and then you deal with it, then you can finally set it up. When it's set up and it's running and it's okay, raw materials is always not a problem. That is why I'm telling you that. Granted, granted that, okay, we even made a bad choice of having to build a factory before bringing in the raw materials, which I think is ridiculous. Granted, 
we've given you the factory for seven years. One, two, three, four, five, six. It has taken you seven years. It has taken seven years to right. plan. I'm coming. <laughs> Rosalind, I'm coming. You, we test run too. We, we test run too. But they have but to test run too. No, no, so it's fine. No problem. So they are they test didn't. running. So they are they test running. No. Ah, you're test running for seven years. No, no, he said last year. Yeah, you years. are test running for seven years. Just for a year. Like and they are not. Rosalind, Rosalind. And they still do And they still are coming. And they still have not been able to produce one sugar in seven years. They just. We have. You guys are too much. On the issue of the one day one factory, let's not forget that last year on the 22nd of April, the president commissioned a $30 million factory, the Atlantic Life Sciences at Ningo Pram Pram. You know, that's the constituency of. Honorable mm -hmm. Sam George. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of factories. We have the shoe fabric, as I mentioned, that we have North. My brother. Under one D one F. We have Omnifet um, Limited. I mean, you can mention a lot. So what what is it? What we are saying is that when it comes to the management of the economy and when it comes to deliberate policies to ensure we are able to build Ghana better, the mm -hmm. NDC has done nothing. They have nothing good to offer the country. Mm. All they know is to collapse companies. We've not forgotten about Wamco. A lot of the state-owned enterprises we have in country, they collapse them. And what they do at best is only to criticize and to Ghanians feed on the pain. It's only so to, to feed on the pain of Ghanaians. Rosalind, what I am saying, let them mention deliberate policies. Okay, that's When really youths were crying that president, give us job, give us job. What did he tell them? Now I'm not a magician to conjure jobs for you. Then you sit here and tell us that. We cannot talk about the, uh, any development in country without going back to thank the president. These are lies. And so when it true. comes to management of the economy, the Ghanaian people are well aware that the MPP is far better mm. than the NDC. Based on records and based on what we have done, there is not right. by talk. It is based on what we have done. <laughs> the NDC has nothing good to offer the country. Great. That's it. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. Super, super grateful. Uh, I've had with me Manasseh Atabuahin and Adele Uma, who were both represented two different political parties. Rose, there, Rose this year, they had a brother so says he, he, would want, he would want to come to Adele for him to teach him how he speaks, the slangs and those <laughs> things. But it doesn't work in governments. <laughs> you know, you know all these, for all the slangs, we're not going anywhere. So ah. someone wants to come and learn. Ah. Ah. The way you are slang. That, 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 that is you calling on Nanado. That is you calling on your That is what I'm saying. That is you calling on your president. you, your it doesn't work in governance. Uh, uh, it doesn't work in governance. Only slams. <laughs> it doesn't work in governance. So be prepared. Nanado.